Here we are back at the i1 Profiler's home screen. Let's take a look at the printer profiling capabilities. You will also note that we are in the advanced user mode. i1 Profiler supports profiling printing systems or processes which are driven in RGB, CMYK, or CMYK with up to four additional colors. You can choose between generic options if you want to profile a printing system which is not connected to your computer. In addition to this, i1 Profiler recognizes all locally installed printers, so you can also select your desired printer directly. Doing this lets i1 Profiler check automatically if a printer is an RGB or CMYK, or rarely CMYK plus X driven printer. There is no difference in the profiling workflow following afterwards. When you select the generic option, RGB printer, or select your printer directly, which turns out to be an RGB driven device. For digital printing systems, it is not the type of inserted inks or toners that determine whether it is an RGB or CMYK or CMYK plus printing system. It depends on the driver or RIP that is being used. Just very quickly, a RIP, if you're not familiar, stands for Raster Image Processor. This controls printers, including linearization, ink restriction, administration of printing queues, setting up color conversion rules, processing print jobs, etc. In what primary color system the printer is driven, for example, if you are using a native vendor-specific driver to print on a particular large format inkjet printing system, it is usually driven as an RGB printer. But if you are using an advanced RIP software to print to that same printer, it is now typically driven as a CMYK printer. Laser printing systems used with a native print driver are also typically CMYK driven. i1 Profiler is not able to recognize RIPs as a printing system because a RIP is a piece of software eventually running on a separate workstation, but you can create and save test charts as TIFF or PDF files and then load them onto your RIP for printing. Let's select CMYK printer for this learning session and click on Profiling. The workflow will guide you through steps to get an ICC profile ready. The first step is to determine a color patch set from which the test chart will be created. There are included some industry standard patch sets like ISO IT8.7, which can be loaded from the assets section, or you can generate a custom patch set. A very good starting point for most printing systems is 1500 patches. Typically, you will keep the ink amount set to 400% because ink restriction is controlled by the print driver linked to the selected print media type, or it's set up in the RIP performed during printer linearization prior to this profiling procedure. Save your patch set settings to the asset section for later use. In the next step, test chart, the layout of the patch set can be defined and fully customized. First, you select your desired measurement device. Different devices have different requirements for color patch size and arrangements. Then choose the desired print paper size and chart borders if wanted. A powerful feature is the ability to customize the color patch size in both width and height. Increasing the patch width in the scanning measurement direction could be helpful to improve measurement data quality for critical structured substrates like textiles or canvas paper. The larger the patch width, the more measurements per patch will be captured and averaged to a final measurement value for a color patch. 
save your patch set settings to the assets section for later reuse. After the layout for the test chart is defined, the chart can either be printed directly from i1 Profiler or it can be saved as a TIFF or PDF file to print it from another application like a RIP. Use the Save As or Print buttons underneath the test chart preview to do so. It is critical that the test chart is printed without any applied ICC color management or proprietary color conversions to achieve a correct ICC profile which covers the full raw color space of the printing system. In print drivers, make sure that the correct paper type, print quality, resolution, etc. is selected. You may even want to save your settings that you use. When printing through a RIP, make sure that the correct media specific linearization and ink restrictions are enabled and also make certain that all ICC conversions are turned off. When the chart is printed and dried, the next step is to measure it. Depending on the capabilities of the instrument used, more or less measurement conditions are selectable. M0, M1, M2, M3, spot or scan measurement mode. Select the desired options, calibrate the measurement device, and start the measurement. The software guides you through this procedure. After the measurement is completed, save your measurement data to the I1 Profiler's Assets section. The saved measurement file will contain the data for all measurement conditions, in other words, M0, M1, M2, etc. Select the data set from which you want to create your ICC profile. The hardest work is now done. The next step is to define the properties of your ICC profile. In the lighting step, you can choose a type of illuminant or viewing light condition for which you want to create your profile. The viewing condition in the graphic arts industry is standardized to D50, so in most cases, D50 will be used here. Please note that standard illuminants are mathematically created definitions of light for use in calculating how an object will look in a series of different lighting conditions. I1 Profiler provides you the options to choose from A, which is a common household incandescent light, D, which stands for daylight, or F, which is fluorescent lighting. For CMYK profiles, the next step, Profile Settings, allows you to control the black generation rules or separation behavior of the profile. This includes definitions like total ink amount, black starting point, or in other words, when black dots appear in relation to cyan, magenta, and yellow, black curve, how much cyan, magenta, and yellow will be replaced by black, maximum black, and further settings. And don't forget, all settings can be saved with a meaningful name to the Assets section for later reuse, or they can be shared with other users. Let's talk about black generation for a moment. Why are black generation and separation rules needed? The CMYK system is an overdetermined color mixing system because blacks and grays can be achieved by mixing certain amounts of cyan, magenta, and yellow. The black generation and separation settings control how much cyan, magenta, and yellow ink will be replaced by black and how much ink is the maximum allowed to be overprinted. Replacing cyan, magenta, and yellow by black does not lead to significant differences in the appearance of the color output. Achieving accurate color is the highest priority, but it helps to avoid technical printing problems like shifting gray balance, bronzing, metamerism, dirty looking pastels, 
or skin tones, over inking, etc. In digital printing, it can also save cost because cyan, magenta, and yellow inks are more expensive than black ink. Which settings to be used is depending upon several aspects like the printing process, printing substrate, inks, and much more. Let's take a look at a couple examples. Large format or grand format inkjet printers on heavy print papers can usually cover a high total ink amount, but due to lower print resolution, light colors tend to look dirty when black dots become visible. Also, cyan, magenta, and yellow ink is expensive. So for these printers, TIA is usually set to maximum, black curve is set to medium plus or higher, and black start is set to around 30%. For newsprint and web offset printing, very thin paper is used, so a lower TIA and stronger black curve is used to avoid too much ink on the paper. Aside from separation rules, some further settings like ICC profile size, ICC version, or a profile's white point can also be defined. The last step is to calculate and save the ICC profile. Give it a meaningful name and save it to the default location for ICC profiles on your system. The option include CXF data is very powerful and should be used. It includes all data and settings from the complete profiling workflow. This allows you to reload the ICC profile at a later time and check what settings were used, or you can recalculate the profile with different selections. When profile calculation is completed, a 3D plot of the final gamut is displayed. This helps you to check and verify that no artifacts are included. It is also possible to load further output profiles for comparison. The final profile can now be used in all ICC compliant applications or workflow systems to color manage your print output, which includes simulating your expected color output on screen, also known as soft proofing, and to get accurate color in all of your prints.